Let's continue our focus this morning on kidnappings, as I mentioned in the headlines, as to how exactly the syndicates work. According to the police, kidnappings for ransom make up only 5% of all cases in the country. So if criminals don't want money, why exactly are they wanting to do this? Yusuf Abramji, a uh, crime an an analyst and, <coughs> excuse me, and a host of uh, Crime Watch. So good to have you on uh, as we talk about trying to get on top of the issue because some of the numbers which we'll see, Yusuf, in the graphics our team have put together, uh, are doubling, skyrocketing in some areas. How do these syndicates do it and why are they doing it, if not for money? Hello, Gareth. We know that uh, kidnappings, correct, uh, as you've indicated, the ones for ransom only formed a small percentage of the total number of kidnappings. So very often people are taken hostage, which is classified as a kidnapping, when they are hijacked. Uh, they try to find your tracking device. They try to empty your bank account in a few hours they take you. A number of kidnappings take place during house robberies or during um, business robberies. Uh, after a few hours, they will release you. But most certainly from the figures we've seen, Gareth, over the past few years, especially in South Africa and even in neighboring Mozambique, the numbers for ransom have gone up dramatically. So what we are seeing in South Africa especially is that the foreign nationals, especially Indian nationals, Pakistani nationals, Somalians, Bangladeshis, uh, and also other foreign nationals are being targeted. Uh, Gauteng always remained a hotspot, but over the past few months, the Western Cape, Cape Town specifically, the numbers have risen dramatically. In the Eastern Cape, We've also seen a sudden rise in kidnappings of especially Bangladeshi and Pakistani nationals. And they are trying to make a quick buck. Uh, as we always say, there are two different categories. The one is the bigger syndicates, some of them with international links. Um, but it seems to me their backbone has been broken. But the large percentage of what we are currently seeing is the so-called copycat gangs, the smaller gangs, uh, especially in the Cape Town area, making a big buck. Let's not forget, we still have one or two active cases uh, in the Eastern Cape. One or two people are still missing. Uh, in Gauteng, a Bangladeshi uh, cash and carry owner was taken a few weeks ago. He's still missing. Uh, so it appears that these uh, syndicates are still at work. Yeah, it certainly does uh, look like it is picking up significantly. We're now on air looking at uh, the graphic on here, the top 30 kidnapping stations, I believe they're called. And I'm seeing most of it, exactly what you're talking about, Yusuf, happening in Gauteng. But if I look at Fosleros, uh, for example, jumping from 11 in 2021 to 77 in 2022, why do we see these jumps in certain parts of Gauteng? Is it where the big industry areas are or what's happening geographically to your mind? Well, the, the Ikuruleni area of Gauteng has been a problem. That is where a number of the foreign shopkeepers are operating, but also it's indicating that these syndicates are active in those areas. We know that there have been a number of kidnappings in Danesia, which is uh, just outside Johannesburg. A major uh, kidnapping syndicate was arrested by the anti-kidnapping task team a few weeks ago, uh, assisted by private security. M the majority of those members are still uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in prison awaiting trial, which is a good sign, because very often the criminal justice system, Garrett, they arrest the suspects, they take them to court, they give them bail, and they only come out to commit more crimes. Mm. So the Houghton area, Phosphorus, Kempton Park, uh, in the Ikuruleni area, um, uh, those areas, Mondio, south of Johannesburg, have been hotspots. But uh, the, the fact that the numbers have gone up dramatically in Cape Town, we know that a Ukrainian uh, national, a, a woman, the um, a wife of a, uh, a businessman was taken hostage. She was released about a week later. We are told that a substantial rent, some speculation about over 1.2 million rand was paid. Those suspects are still at large. So while some inroads are be have been made, um, the, the smaller gangs uh, appear still to have been getting away. And, I, and I'm happy that the city of Cape Town specifically have now called on the police for a partnership. They want to join hands and fight the scourge. I'm also worried, and I've said it uh, before, Gareth, corrupt criminal cops or even metro cops may be aiding and uh, abetting some of the suspects. And we've even seen in some of the kidnappings where these cops stop the people only mm. to hand them over to the kidnapping syndicates, which is a worry. No, it's a very big worry when you have someone who's posing as a, a metro cop or as a police officer, we're legally bound to stop when we get pulled over, but then in some cases uh, people are getting kidnapped. Is there something that people are doing uh, that are getting kidnapped? 
Uh, are they perhaps too active on social media? Are they driving flashy cars? I'm trying to get to a point of, is there something that we can do to not draw attention to ourselves if we have large amounts of money or we have a company that does very well? How do we avoid attracting attention to ourselves, Yusuf? Very good question, Garrett, and that has been asked repeatedly. Um, most certainly, if you believe that you are vulnerable, um, and I think people who are vulnerable is people that uh, are very active on social media, uh, and, and unfortunately, people show their lifestyle. They show their luxury home. They show where they're going to. They show, show them the cars they own, and that makes you a target. Mm. Um, and, and very often, these people are profiled by these uh, syndicates. So, yes, sometimes they get inside information from your employees, from your neighbors, to say this person might be having a lot of money, but social media is often watched. These criminal syndicates follow you on social media, and that is why they often say, even put your location uh, services off to make sure that you are not followed. So social media can be very, very dangerous if you are vulnerable. Yeah. Also, uh, the inside information is often gained from people in your, in your circle. Uh, and that is how they identify their targets. Uh, when some of the suspects were arrested and when they were interrogated by police to say, where did you get the information? It often came from a worker. It often came from a colleague. Uh, and one or two cases, people say they get it from social media. So you need to be very, very careful. We are also often uh, also asked, Garrett, what do you do uh, if you are vulnerable? If you can afford it, I often say get uh, personal protection, get bodyguards if you can afford it. Uh, we know that uh, armored vehicles, armored cars, on the market they're very expensive but if you can afford it it may be worthwhile investing in that and and very uh, uh, we've, we've seen in some of the cases millions and millions of rents in ransom is being paid and again if you are kidnapped my advice to victims families is reported immediately to the police these syndicates will warn you we'll do abc if you go to the police you have to work with the police and i think the police having said that uh, we have this problem have made some inroads perhaps not enough but some inroads have been made, especially by the anti-kidnapping task team, which was set up a few months ago, headed by crime intelligence and other units. But I think a lot of work still needs to be done. Yeah. We know that this trend has been very active in Mozambique, uh, where major syndicates are operating, even north of Africa. But the trans global, trans, uh, global Initiative Transnational report just released a few weeks ago shows that South Africa has become a kidnapping hotspot on our continent and even in, in, uh, if you compare it to other countries around the world. Yeah, and we need to try and do everything we can to, A, work with the police, you're quite right, Yusuf, but also not draw attention to yourself. And that's why I asked you about uh, how we do this uh, and draw attention to ourselves. Social media, I think you're absolutely right, is probably one of the big giveaways. You're giving the information away without even realizing that you're endangering yourself. Yusuf Abramji, uh, anti-crime activist and host of Crime Watch on ENC. I appreciate your time and what is a focus on kidnapping here on uh, the South African morning. It's as simple as that uh, location setting on social media. Stop checking in at shopping centers. Stop checking in at restaurants. Stop taking photos of your flashy cars. You never know who could be watching. We're heading up to